What's up? I'm Tony Archer, mechanic for Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki, and I'm wrenching for Carson Mumford. All right, we're gonna start at the front of the bike. Carson runs a 996 bar, paired up with some Renthal soft half waffle grips. Arc aluminum levers, you know, obviously breakaway levers. It's a pretty standard, like, neutral setup. Not, not too low, not too high, just, just a little down from level. I still glue them, and then the wire tie is more of just like an insurance policy, you know, just in case anything breaks loose, but you could run them without the safety wire and it'd be fine. Run the billet throttle tube that's also a PC product that you can buy you know right there at PC we have our tech our plastic supplier because of our oversized radiators we have to have oversized louvers and they produce those for us and save us from having to, to modify anything too heavily from from a stock part stock Kawasaki master cylinders we run an older model master cylinder for the piston size a brake side stock brake lines you know we obviously just cut some sheathing off and, and put some heat shrink on to combat water going in and out and then uh, carbon guard on the clutch side it's a little more vulnerable to rocks you know it's a little bit thinner we're in the piston area stock kill switch kind of try to keep it out of the way the the start button has a guard on it so if you ever lean forward or accidentally touch it you know you can't you can't bump it wrong we obviously just do some do some work on it for protection and just kind of preventative got some sheathing on it and everything else we consolidate our, our start map to you know where the actual connection is to declutter the handlebar area we try to keep it free of you know too many buttons and stuff and keep it simple but this is nice here it's it's tucked in it's protected and uh you know we we obviously put some epoxy on it, protect it from water getting in. Pro Circuit triple clamps, Pro Circuit throttle tube, all this stuff is available to buy. For Carson, he's a little on the taller side, but he runs just the standard bar mount. He doesn't go up high or anything else. It's just, you know, the, the standard bar mount you buy. We do have options, but outside of that, as far as tension on the steering, you know, he's not crazy. It's pretty neutral, and I, I just have a spec that we torque it to every single time, so it's consistent. Yeah, not not too loose. He doesn't like it flopping around too much, so we just try to keep it, keep it firm for him. Showa Pro Circuit A kit. We have a Showa a technician that services and does all the R&D for us and obviously all the testing. As far as what Carson likes, you know, everyone's a little different. Obviously in Supercross, they're extremely stiff, but uh, we're, we're looking for the best of both worlds. You want the stiffness, but you still need that, the plushness on the initial part of the stroke. That way you have like a bit of feel in your hands and you can feel the front tire and feel the traction and, and get around the track better. Going to the front brake, we run braking rotors. We pair that up with a factory Nissan caliper. This is a Supercross caliper. It runs smaller, thinner pads, you know, just for weight more than anything we'll, we won't run that outdoors that's a supercross only thing and then carbon uh, discard is something we design in-house and we outsource it acts as a discard obviously to protect the brake rotor from rocks and you know hitting other riders and then also it helps that lug can dig into the dirt and catch on ruts and it kind of acts as a little bit of a ski you know and, and get the guy through the, through the rut better so our front axle is titanium and that is something you know of our own design as well to work with our fork lugs we get made for the wheels we're xl a60s paired up to k HI hubs were Dunlop spec tires. We have a couple options right now. Carson's on the, the newest style of it, and that's probably going to be something that they'll turn into production eventually. But yeah, as far as tire goes, he really doesn't. Once we found this tire, there's there's no reason to jump around. He's, he's comfortable. He's happy with it. So on, until we have an issue, we'll, we'll stick with where we're at. Our radiators are an oversized radiator with a built-in oil cooler. They're Martin radiators, welded and supported and braced. You know, in the case of a fall, they won't break as easily. You know, obviously you got the bleed or a tie bleeder. On the shrouds, we have carbon extensions. You know, he's a taller guy and, you know, sometimes he'll catch his boot on the end of the shroud and that's just a, an insurance policy to make sure that that doesn't, you know, cause a problem in the race for us. So we use Samco hoses. They're a little tougher and, you know, a little bit is cosmetic. You know, we, we run those, but they definitely, we can request them to make a different shape or run it a little differently than how it runs stock, you know, based on what we need to do. So we're running Works Chassis Labs, titanium uppers and, and front engine mounts. We have a couple different options on those. Carson is on our standard setup that everyone's on. You know, we have a couple different variations if anyone needs it, but right now we've just kept it pretty simple and he's, he's stuck with those. And the uppers are not far away from what we ran before on the stock ones. We just have them on there mostly for weight. Here at PC, you know, we're one of the few teams left that us as mechanics, we build our own engines. So every week, you know, we race, we take the engine back, we tear it apart, we inspect everything and we build everything in-house in Corona. A lot of stuff inside the engine is stuff you can buy. You can send your engine to PC. There's quite a few things in there that you can't obviously but uh i'll keep that to myself it's awesome you know we take the engines we tear them apart we inspect them we dyno them every time we run them and then uh yeah we bring them back and, and do it all over again every week a lot of these parts on the engine like i said you can buy the ignition cover and, and the timing plugs and the shifter all that stuff is available to buy the shifter that we run is in the standard position to stock you know pretty neutral he is a little bigger he's got you know probably some bigger feet and all that but we just run the standard tip we do have options for that to move it in you know or in or out a little bit and 
we also have like a half spline option if we needed to split you know the height of it but uh, as far as Carson goes he just runs it standard so again we outsource for our carbon skid plate designed in-house you know to try to provide the best protection we can for the ignition cover and water pump and everything else we drill drill a hole and run a rubber garment through to, to keep our overflow hose in check you know uh, instead of flopping around and case saver is PC product as well we bolt it on with aluminum bolts you know obviously we want the case saver to be there to protect the cases obviously but in the case that a chain does come off you know the aluminum bolts will will break away and it'll it'll make space for the chain to kind of get by so our swing arm pivot is titanium we run a plug on the end mostly just so mud can't pack in and then on the other side for the brake pedal we actually have a brake pedal stop in the case that if the brake pedal gets hit up it doesn't rip the guts out of it we're running grip tape um, it's made by vibram which is just a team sponsor they provide it pre-cut ready to go and it actually lasts pretty long pretty gnarly stuff our foot pegs are designed in-house and then same with our foot peg mounts and uh, just stock springs tie foot peg pins we run our pins backwards you know obviously the cotter pin can get damaged underneath and it's just a standard here to run it this way it's kind of safe the cotter pin doesn't get affected by any of the dirt or the rocks or anything else like that so the, the pin can't fall out so some people will argue that running it this way if the cotter pin gets damaged it'll fall right out but you know it's it's way out of harm's way where it's at to keep mud from packing in into the springs and into the actual pivot of the foot peg we run titanium peg armor which we also design and have made in-house design and produce our own air boots that's all stuff you can buy that's actually a big part that Mitch and the guys work on a lot we're probably a good six generations into it but it's huge so we build the engine to the spec we like and then we fine-tune it with the air boot So it's just a stock SR subframe. Uh, we beef up the mount for the pipe just for durability purposes. These guys, you know, they're they're riding the bikes hard and you know try to do everything we can to prevent any type of failure. Twin air air filters. Obviously, we cut out the panel a little bit on the side plate, give it a little bit more airflow, let it breathe a little bit, and then it's a thinner supercross filter, so it breathes a little bit more. And then we bolt it in with a titanium bolt rather than the stock plastic. So we're running RK chains with a standard master link, Renthal sprockets, 13. 49 uh, we don't we don't play around with gearing too much just because of wheel position you know we test the bike where the wheel position is where we want it we'll usually just tailor the engine to work with this gearing underneath we have our pro circuit carbon chain guide that's something uh, you guys can buy you know we, we sell that in-house so rear axle is also titanium a lot of the dimpling and all the machining on those we do in-house our axle blocks are also something we produce and design in-house on the back XLA 60s KHI hubs braking rotors obviously all the fasteners are titanium we run Dunlop's latest spec tire 110 we don't we don't mess around with the 120 just because of a little bit of power robbing we try to free up the bike as much as we can our rear caliper is something that we work with a lot obviously the rear brake piston is coated you know for friction and then also a lot of holes drilled in it to disperse heat and then if you look on the top of the caliper we drill a hole there and that also lets heat dissipate and, and get out we run a carbon guard on it for protection that's something we design in-house as well and they're just paired up to a stock brake line and stock brake pads as well. The rear brake caliper is mounted up to an SR brake hanger. It's billet and just a little bit lighter than stock. Yeah, we, we still run the cotter pin on the axle, surprisingly. The rear of the bike, we're running the Showa A-Kit as well, and we pair that up with our linkage setup again. Same thing, this is all stuff you can buy. You know, we produce all this in-house. We have our Showa technician obviously tune the bike based on what type of linkage ratio we wanna run, and we work around that. We do chassis height on the bike, so we actually extend or shorten the shock to keep chassis height consistent every time. The rear master cylinder is an SR part. You know, we, we get it made without the window. It's just one more thing that we take away and it can't fail if it's not there. So we have our pro circuit clevis that we make in house as well and all, all titanium hardware to put it all together. Our exhaust, obviously we make pipes. So we have a pipe made exactly how we want it to the spec we want it. It's a little bit different than a customer exhaust, mostly because of the sound testing in Supercross. We run data on the bike at all times. So we have an O2 sensor plugged in always on the race bikes. I guess along with everyone else, we've switched to the electric water pump this year. So something that we weren't sure about at first, we put it on the dyno, we did all the stuff with it and we weren't sure what type of gains we were gonna get, but we tested it with the guys and it frees it up and it just makes a lot of power. There's, it's kind of a no brainer. So our primary cover is acidized a little bit for cosmetic, but also the biggest benefit is that it dissipates heat. So on this side is a clutch cover we designed, you know, it's, it's a little bit different. Then we have our water pump, which again is 
for sale. You can buy it for, for all the bikes. Same with our oil fill cap that comes with the timing plug kit. For our clutch, we run Hinson components with stock plates, and then we have our PC clutch springs. You know, we've got a couple different variations of it, but it's a pretty hard hitting clutch, especially for Supercross. You want the clutch to grab really hard in the whoops and everything else, but you also have to have it soft enough to be able to handle it off the start. So we kind of have our own spec for clutch springs and everyone just sticks to that. No one's really much different. So on our brake pedal, we have, a, it's an SR part, it has a folding tip on it. And we also have a brake snake attached to it. And the brake snake is there. So brake pedal catches a tough block or hits another rider or grabs something and it tries to pull out and bend. Brake snake is there to grab it. So, you know, it's obviously connected to the pedal and then to the frame, you can't pull it out. It's, you know, just to stop it from bending out and ruining the race. In the case of a crash and their start button breaks, you know, we run a backup starter button uh, underneath, kind of tucked away. If you don't know it's there, you probably would never see it, but you know, it's just a little safety precaution in case the guys can't start their bike. We go up on pressure on the radiator cap. We're at a 1.8 cap and we even have higher pressures in you know, hotter, muddier conditions if need be. We run a pin through it where the radiator cap sits, you know, their knee can hit it or something else and it can twist it off and try to prevent that as much as we can. We run a catch can. If the bike overheats, it'll it'll pull, push coolant into the can. And then as the bike cools down, it'll suck it back in. So we don't lose that coolant and just dump it out of the bike. For the seat, it doesn't have a preference really. Um, we run a Guts lightweight seat foam with a Throttle Syndicate seat cover. He's not picky on the seat. I try to keep it fresh. That way it's consistent. I try not to let it get too blown out. I I'm sure he probably wouldn't mind, but just for peace of mind on my end, I try to make sure that it's fresh and it's not too soft. And, and that way, every time it gets on the bike, it's the same. We run data on the race bikes at all times. So we have a logger on the front that records everything the bike is doing. And after every single session, uh, we have GPS data and everything else that goes onto the chip. And we monitor it every single time the bike goes on the track keep track of if there's any issues we can catch them before they actually happen we have our whole shot button that we design for for the race team we can go to the top button and it's not breaking free as much but with the supercross crates we we run it as deep as we possibly can without damaging the port guard or anything else like that underneath uh, we have a port guard brace so for our radiator hoses we run strictly Oedeker, uh hose clamps you can't unscrew them or anything else they're one-time use obviously as we rebuild the bike we cut them off and replace them new every time but there's no, no clamps on the bike that can be unscrewed or taken off. There's no, no risk. Throttle Syndicate does all of our graphics for us and seat covers. And then all our lubricants, oil inside the engine, everything else is all Maxima. So above our skid plate, we have a water pump guard, extra protection there. You know, um, again, we do everything we can to make sure these guys, if they take a hit to another bike or something else, they can finish the race. Or most of the tie on the bike is KHI. We have some other vendors that make, you know, little bits and pieces, you know, that we want differently. Or if we change something and we need something you know a little quicker we'll, we'll run all that stuff and then a lot of aluminum fasteners in, in the plastics in certain areas of the bike that you know we can save weight on with you know out needing that extra strength that the tie has We're running vp fuels mitch is very loyal to vp he's been with you know vp for a very long time so for the electrical system on the bike obviously we get a harness from kawasaki that we then change and you know modify it to the needs we need met with it and if we're running different pieces or adding stuff to it the harness and the electrical system on the bike in general is something that we put a big emphasis on because you know these things they run off of the electrical system and if that fails then the bike doesn't run so we have to make sure that's spot on at all times.